Good morning. Good morning. Be bold before Christ. The re or the be, excuse me, let me start over. Be bold before God. For Christ the rejected has become the cornerstone of our faith. Through the Good Shepherd we are found, comforted, and loved. Would you please join in the call to worship? The Lord is my shepherd. I will fear no darkness. We will love one another as Christ loves us. Christ the Good Shepherd has compassion for all. We will love one another as Christ loves us. Open your hearts to goodness and mercy. We will love one another as Christ loves us. Love not merely, merely in thought and word, but in truth and action. We will love one another as Christ loves us. And will you please join in the prayer of invocation? Shepherd, Shepherd of love, guardian of our souls, shower us with your love and offer us fullness of life in your name. When our spirits are parched, you lead us beside still waters and quench our thirst for righteousness. Touch our hearts and minds so that your goodness and mercy may follow us every day of our lives. May we abide in your love and grace for all eternity. Amen. And our first hymn is Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us on page 381. Stand or sit however you're more comfortable. Holy Catholic 
church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The first reading is reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Acts chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. The next day their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are being asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The responsive reading from the Psalms is from Psalm 23, which is on page 754. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters. Restores my life. Leads me in right paths for the sake of the Lord's name. Even though I walk through the darkest <coughs> valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And if the ushers would come forward, it's time for us to return our gifts to the Lord.
Because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If the children and youth would come forward, it's time for their lesson. That's what the plan is. 
So it uses, it serves its purpose. <coughs> Did we all have a purpose? Did God give us all a purpose? And hmm, what if we're filled with nothing? Can we do our purpose? No. Oh, we don't want to be filled with water. Do you know what we want to be filled with? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, remember, that's God. We want God living in us, right? Because the story of Acts has Peter and John healing. Last week, he was healing a man who could walk. They were, they were walking, and they saw a man, and he couldn't walk. And Peter... And John, John Jesus' disciple, said, get up and walk. And he got up and walked. Because they were filled with water. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Just like we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. All we have to do is say, oh, Jesus died for me, right? And then the Holy Spirit goes inside. That's who our is moving, isn't it? They, the Holy Spirit makes us move too sometimes. Good ways, right? Mm -hmm. He wants us to do what God wants us to do. So does God, oh, last week in Sunday school, does God want us to be mean to our friends? No. No. He wants us to be good, doesn't he? Yes. To be good examples. Just like, Peter, just like Peter and John were. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and do good things. Okay, let's pray. Are we ready? Dear God, Dear God, God thank you for Peter and John. Thank you for Peter and John. Who remind us, <laughs> who remind us that we can learn from Jesus. That we can learn from Jesus. How to be filled. How to be filled. With your goodness and spirit. With your goodness and spirit. Thank you and amen. Thank you and amen. Good job, guys.
John 10, 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, but does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong in this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. The Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Today we begin with a trivia question. WPA 1941. Where have you seen that inscription? Cornerstone of the school. Mm -hmm. It's found at the cornerstone of the original building at school. It denotes the year that the, st the school was built along with the group who built it. And you should remember from your history classes that WPA stands for Works Progress Administration, which was created during the Depression by a presidential order of President Franklin D. Roosevelt. And it provided jobs for millions of men who built public works projects, such as public buildings and roads. Webster defines cornerstone as the basic part of something on which his existence, success, or truth depends. In today's epistle reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Peter told a crowd gathered in Jerusalem, Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. Now the cornerstone of a building is typically the first stone that's laid for a masonry foundation of the structure. And all the other stones are set in reference to the cornerstone. So the cornerstone is the rock upon which the weight of the entire structure rests. In our reading from the Acts of the Apostles, as I said, Peter told the assembly of rulers, elders, and scribes, including Ananias and Caiaphas, that Jesus was the stone that was rejected by them and it had become the cornerstone. It wasn't easy for Peter and the other disciples to claim Jesus as the cornerstone of their lives and their faith. Peter made this declaration as he and some of the other disciples were on trial for their actions, all of which stemmed from their certainty that Jesus the Lord of their lives, was the long-awaited Messiah. Peter told the gathered assembly that there is no salva there's salvation in no other name by heaven given by mort among mortals, by which we must be saved. Peter was never one to mince words. He and the other disciples claimed Jesus as their leader, even when the politics of the time made it dangerous for them to do so. In fact, they suffered greatly, and they ended up dying for their belief. James was the first disciple to be put to death. And he was killed by a sword and armors from Herod. Peter was crucified in Rome around 66 AD. And many stories say that he asked to be crucified upside down because he didn't think he was worthy to die in the same manner as Jesus. Andrew was martyred in Greece. Philip was put to death after he converted the wife of a Roman official to Christianity. Bartholomew was also martyred, but nobody knows exactly where he went. Matthew was stabbed to death in Africa. 
Thomas died after being stabbed by four Roman soldiers. James was pelted with stones and then clubbed to death. Simon was sawed in half. Philip, like several of his Christian brothers, was martyred. Thaddeus, sometimes called Jude, was killed by arrows. Paul was not one of the original disciples, but we can't discount his influence on the scores of people who chose to become Christians after hearing him. Paul was beheaded. John was the only one of the 12 original disciples who was not killed for his faith, but he suffered greatly because of it. Jesus laid down his life for our salvation. His disciples died for their witness. In contrast, we're only asked to act with charity and love to all the world. That sounds pretty easy compared to martyrdom or crucifixion, doesn't it? In confirmation class, we've been discussing social justice. It can be summed up in just a few words, as Micah did when he said, do what is right, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Mark explained it like this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. And our epistle from John bears much the same message. Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. James Howell said that Augustine and John Calvin, divided by a lot of years and a lot of belief, both interpreted this epistle passage as explaining the severity of the high demands of God. On the other hand, Martin Luther said that the scripture was all about God's mercy. So if three well-known theologians like those couldn't agree on what John meant, how can we? We don't have to. John posed this question in verse 17. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Powell speculates that Martin Luther was right in his interpretation that we're called to see and imitate God's mercy. How pointed out that John called followers of Christ little children. He went on to say that Luther was surely correct that God shows mercy to all, because otherwise, according to how, Martin Luther would have said, you grown up doofuses, or something like that. We can't just talk love and mercy, though. We have to show it through our truth and our actions. There's an often quoted idiom that says, don't talk the talk unless you can walk the walk. That means we have to show through our behavior what we profess to believe. Author Sam Wells says that Christians can't just mail in or drop off charity, but we also can't ignore what we need. Jurgen Moltmann said the opposite of poverty isn't property. The opposite, opposite of both property and poverty is community. But unfortunately, that's not a commonly held belief in today's society. People have learned that they need to look out for themselves more than they need to help others. The idea of sacrificial living and sacrificial giving is totally alien to most people. But it was an uncommon idea for the early Christians, too. They had learned from the Jewish Torah that they should love their neighbors as they love themselves. But now Jesus was pushing them further. Jesus said they needed to give away all their possessions and even lay down their lives for others. John Wesley, you knew he was going to get in there, didn't you? Said there's no holiness without social holiness. He said that faith working by love is the length and breadth and depth and height of Christian perfection. Sanctifying grace, according to Wesley, was the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit to change our lives so that we become increasingly more conformed to the mind of Christ. He said that meant that we were becoming perfected in love. So Wesley's, Wesley's social holiness is akin to today's social justice. We aim to do good toward all we encounter. Not just those within our community of faith, but to everyone. That's our calling. We're to act with love and charity. We don't do what we do for other people. We do it for Jesus. Our gospel passage reminded us of Jesus' words that he was the good shepherd. And that the good shepherd would lay down his life for the sheep. We're supposed to emulate his care for the sheep, which means all humanity. <coughs> a hired hand doesn't care for sheep or anything else with the same devotion as the owner does. So like Jesus, we should bring in sheep from other flocks and other folds. It says in John there will be one flock, one shepherd. Our flock should be made up of all those who have chosen to follow Christ. He's our shepherd. Our psalm foreshadowed the gospel's good shepherd, Jesus. We've all heard Psalm 23 many, many times. It's a standard scripture for our funerals. We see Jesus as our caretaker and our guide. I think we've kind of romanticized shepherds because of Jesus. 
Shepherds were caretakers for their sheep, but typically they weren't very savory characters. In fact, if we'd meet a shepherd on the city street late at night, we'd probably feel pretty uncomfortable. James Howe said that the first shepherd he ever encountered in person was wearing an Elvis t-shirt, big green galoshes, swatting sheep in their rears with a large stick, and hollering expletives. <laughs> That's not how we picture Jesus. Although, to be honest, he might feel sometimes, often, that he needs to be swatting and hollering at us. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. We want to think of shepherds as giving tender, loving, personal care. In Matthew, we read that if a shepherd has a hundred sheep, but one gets lost, the shepherd will leave the other ninety-nine to go look for the lost one. Jesus wanted to be sure that all of his listeners knew that the kingdom of God was accessible to all, even those who had sinned or strayed from God's path. In our modern-day context, I think Jesus. It's like the GPS system that many of us use when we're trying to reach a new location. If we take a wrong turn or detour, the GPS refigures quickly and it tells us how to head back in the correct direction. Isn't that kind of what Jesus does? Anytime, every time we stray, he recalibrates and he tries to steer us back in the way that he believes he knows us to go. Some theologians counted the words in the Hebrew version of Psalm 23. And they found that the center word, the word in the middle of everything, is with. Thou art with me. God doesn't have to be a fixer or a protector or a giver of whatever favor we think we need. God's main purpose is simply to be with us. Likewise, that's what we should do when, as our aim when we're ministering to others. We don't have to try to fix them in any way. All we need to do is be with them. Reverend Martin Dale told the following story about a shepherd caring for his sheep along the side of the desert, deserted road. Suddenly, a brand new Porsche screeched to a halt in a cloud of dust. The driver was dressed in very high end clothing. And he got out of the car and said, If I can tell you how many sheep you have, will you give me one of them? The shepherd said, Sure. So the man connected his laptop to his phone. He accessed his satellite internet. He scanned the flock of sheep and he opened this huge database. He used his mobile printer and printed out a big 150-page long report. And then he said to the shepherd, you have exactly 1,596 sheep here. The shepherd said, you're correct. Pick the sheep you want. And the man did so and placed the animal on his porch. Then the shepherd said, if I guess your profession, will you return my animal to me? Why not, said the man. You're an IT consultant, said the shepherd. How'd you know, asked the man. The shepherd said, well, very simple. You came here without being asked. You used your equipment to tell me something I already know. And finally, you don't know anything about my business. So now please, can I have my dog back? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that how people sometimes treat those they're called to serve? They see themselves as experts. They think they're capable of telling those that they see as inferior every single thing wrong with them. They are trying to be helpful so much as they are trying to exhibit their superior intelligence. We're called to love. That's it. We aren't called to show how much better we are at anything than anybody else. We can't be called to do that, because regardless of what we might think, we aren't better than anybody else. There was once a pastor who had served the same church for 25 years, and the time had come for him to retire. As he was clearing out the bedroom closet, he found a little bowl with five eggs in it. Under the bowl was a box that contained over $1,000. He called to his wife and said, do you know what the egg, these eggs and this money are for? She said, yeah. Every time you preach a bad sermon, I put an egg in the basket. And the pastor was very pleased with himself. Because in 25 years, he knew he'd only preached five bad sermons, according to his wife. And he said, but what about the money? And she said, oh, every time I got a dozen eggs, I sold them. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to be looking in my closet to see if there's a bowl of eggs or a box of money. I think, though, that we all resemble that pastor just sometimes, just like we resemble that IT consultant sometimes. We think we know more than somebody else, and we want to be sure that person and everybody else knows. But that's not what Jesus calls us to do. We're supposed to live out the love and the joy that we found in Christ. We aren't supposed to be putting our love, our joy, and our faith into action as an act of charity or an act of duty. We're supposed to be showing our beliefs through our love and our service. We're challenged to be in community with others, to be transformed by others, and to be dependent on others as we join in showing that Christ is the cornerstone of our lives. 
John reminded his epistle readers that they couldn't live in word or speech, but in deed and truth. May we follow his advice as we let our whole lives reflect God's love. Thanks be to God. Amen. And our final hymn is number 128, He Leadeth Me. Stand or sit however you're more comfortable. <coughs> sponsored by the FBLA at the Community Center. Uh, that's for adults 55 and over. Uh, Carol's here today. If you've not signed up yet, please let her know that you're planning to be there. Um, there's a $5 fee per person, and that's to cover uh, the refreshments. The next Sunday, things are getting pretty busy. Again, the school coming is the Osage R1 Spring Concert and Art Show that begins at 3 p.m. The next weekend, I've got the dates messed up. On Saturday, May the 18th, is the PTO Carnival at school from 11 to 2. Uh, I was with Sherry Starkey last night at a meeting, and she said that the, uh, the Chamoy Historic Preservation Committee, or whatever it's called, uh, is having a rummage sale on that Saturday as well. They're going to be having it at Betty Linhart's house. If anybody wants to donate anything, they'll be more than happy to take your donations. Considering where it is, I'd say that the easiest thing to do is to just bring them to here to church, and then we'll let Sherry know that they're here on like Thursday or Friday before so they can get things set up. Uh, and then on Sunday, May the 19th, is Pentecost and Confirmation. Uh, we'll be confirming the five youth who've been in confirmation class, and we'll also affirm the confirmation of uh, 
David, Waylon, and Madeline, who were all involved, <coughs> already gone through confirmation that their formal um, public confirmation service was postponed because of COVID. Uh, and then the next Friday is graduation and school is over. A um, couple things that I need to tell you. First of all, I have to do special thanks to Carol Clark because I wasn't for sure what year was on the cornerstone of school. And I was able to message her the other day and find out with having, without having to drive to school and look. I thought I'd find a picture of it somewhere, but it didn't have into the year on it. Uh, and we've been praying for Ray, and here he is at church. So this is wonderful to see you here, Ray. Uh, we rejoice that you're doing well enough to be here. Uh, there are a number of names that I put on the, in the bulletin that we talked about last Sunday. Who else has announcements, prayer concerns, celebrations? Steve? Uh, on Tuesday, uh, Mark and Judy Schaefer-Cutter from the Oldsville Lions Club and volunteers <coughs> from the Tamoy Lions Club uh, were going to vision screen every student in the school if they, if they want to. Uh, of all our Lions Club programs, I think this is perhaps the best and yeah. the most meaningful. Uh, it's a very simple process. It's a very specialized camera. Uh, it just looks into the eyes, uh, uh, it identifies any potential vision problems that may need to be referred to, a, to an eye doctor. Uh, it's a little bit scary, but uh, of all the vision screenings, usually there's approximately 10% of the kids that are vision screened that have an issue that needs to be referred to an eye doctor. Uh, so uh, it's a program called Kids Sight, uh, of all the various Lions Club site conservation projects. I think this is the best. It's a very specialized camera. Uh, the camera costs about $10,000. Our Lions Club district, uh, through the generosity of uh, Three Rivers Helping Hands and another foundation, we got two grants to buy this camera. Uh, so it's a it's a big deal. So that's Tuesday all the, at, the, at the school. Rhonda? I just have a couple of updates. Um, Melissa Warren had her last treatment this week. Yeah. Rang the bell. And I spoke with her yesterday and she's doing pretty well. She still has this matter effects from those chemo pills as far as the feeling skin, but she's feeling good. So that's a real positive. I saw on Facebook this week where Madison Nolte has been diagnosed with cancer and we need to keep her in our prayers. And then my joy, my baby girl has a birthday Tuesday. Whoa. Karen has a birthday. Me too. As you can tell. <laughs> uh, Dorothy? Uh, Denise Pace, I feel like talking to her this week. And she's finally gotten up with her new moment. That's great. Anything else? Carol? It's coming Saturday. Um, so please, if you follow those juniors, seniors, and especially our great parents, in your prayers as we keep together from home and have a good time for the students. And, and remember that tradition that I think might be <coughs> unique to our school, that you get to go and watch them all walk in. Mm -hmm. Cheryl? Uh, Jeannie Barrick is having some health issues and having some chest problems. Should I put her name in a little too? Anybody else? I have to give an extra thanks to Carol. She's done a lot of extra work with Madeline in the past year. We got to see the fruits of all of her labor this past week when they had the state FBLA conference. It's a very, a good, a very wonderful experience. Um, really a, a neat program. Um, anybody else? All right, then let's pray and uh, go out to serve the Lord. Are we going to sing birthdays? Oh, yes, we do need to sing birthdays. Rhonda, what's our artist? Okay, so we got Heather and Sharon. Uh-huh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Heather Karen. Happy birthday to you. Casey, would you like to come and get something from for Miss Heather and for Taryn? What would you like, Heather? Would you like a bookmark, a sticker, or a pencil? Um, let's see if you pick it out. Um, what do you think? Bookmark, sticker, or pencil? Sticker. Do you think that's what Taryn would want too? I I want to play for me. Okay, will you take them down?
down there and you let Miss Heather pick one. <coughs> you want to just take it with you. Take the box with you and let Miss Heather pick one and then you, you and Lulu pick them out too. Let's pray during the sticker picking. <laughs> it might take a while. Dear God, we bless you for everything that you do for us each and every day. <coughs> we thank you for all the joys in our lives every day. We thank you. Uh, we rejoice that we have Ray with us today. We rejoice for the birthdays of Taryn and Heather. We thank you for the help of all of our teachers. We especially thank you today for all the work that Carol has done for FBLA and for the upcoming prom and for the prom that we get to go to as well. We thank you for all of those things. We thank you that you have brought Melissa through her cancer treatments and that she was able to ring the bell this week. We thank you that Dinky is doing better. We ask you to be with those who are heavy in our hearts and our minds. Uh, Amy and Gabe and Irene and Kathy and Paulette and Vivian who we talked about last week. We ask you to be with Madison and we ask you to be with Jeannie. We ask you to be with all of those who are in our hearts and in our minds, even if we don't speak their names out loud. We ask you to, to bless us as we go about our week and to help us to remember to serve you and honor you in all that we say and do. We thank you for all of those things, just as we thank you for sending your Son to be our Savior, your Son who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us go forth in peace. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.